there ain't nothing granny about this square. Today, I'm going to show you how to crochet this spiral square motif that you can incorporate into your next project. It lays perfectly flat, uses up to four different colors, and you can continue the square on and on to any size you'd like, from a coaster to a blanket. In fact, I just used this spiral square for a swirly spiral sweater, and when that video is available, I'll link to it down below. But for now, let's get started with just the square itself, shall we? So you can use any weight yarn and hook. I went with DK weight yarn and a four and a half millimeter hook for my sample square today. It starts out with a chain four ring, just like many other granny squares. So select your first color and in that color, which we'll call color A, make a slip knot and chain four. Then slip stitch into the first chain to make a little chain four ring. Still in color A, to start building our spiral, work one single crochet into the ring, followed by one half double crochet, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through three loops to work a slightly taller stitch. Even taller still, we'll work one double crochet. and two more double crochets for a total of five stitches in that first color. Three double crochets, one half double crochet, and a single crochet. And now it's time to change color. To drop color A while leaving the working yarn attached and the last loop still live and ready to be picked up later, I like to just pull that last loop out long and leave it hanging there. You could pop on a clippy stitch marker to hold it in place as well. Now it's time to grab color B and I'm going to chain one in my ring to just kind of fasten on color B. And push it up against the stitches that I just made. And we'll repeat the same process we just did with color A to start spiraling up in color B now. One single crochet, one half double crochet, and three double crochets all into the chain four ring with color B. Pull that loop up long as well, and now I can grab color C and do it again. Last but not least, the fourth color. And it's getting a little crowded up here on my chain four ring, but using the four different colors will make it easier for us to tell the stitches apart and see what we need to see on the next round. And here's what your square will look like after the very first round. You've got four live loops, and we'll take turns using each of them on each round. So every new round starts with color A. So it's important to remember which color you chose as your first one. With color A on my hook, I'm gonna work two double crochets in the first single crochet of color B from the previous round. And to find that smushed up stitch, it might be easier to count back from the three double crochets and the one half double crochet. That fifth stitch is the single crochet, so work two double crochets into it in color A. Then make one double crochet in the next half double from the previous round. And that's all you gotta do in color A for round two. We'll leave those last three double crochets unworked for now, pull the loop long and move on to color B. And in color B, do the very same thing, but into color C's stitches this time. Two double crochets in the single crochet
and one double crochet in the half double crochet. The same thing with color C into color D. And lastly, color D into A's stitches. But since we started round two in color A, there will be more color A stitches left over when we're done with color D. And all the colors have equal length sides now, indicating that this round is done. Time to start round three. So grab color A, since it's the beginning of a round, and for round three, work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Three color B stitches remain to work into, so in the next stitch, work two double crochets. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and in the last stitch, work three double crochets. And since this is the stitch attached to the live loop of color B, it can be a little loose, so I kind of pinch it with my thumb while I work that three double crochet increase right into there. Pull up a long loop in color A, remove your hook, and insert it into the live loop of color B. And again, we'll work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Two into the next one. Chain one, skip one, and three double crochets into the very last stitch of color C. I'm gonna finish up with colors C and D, and we'll meet back up at the end of round three. And again, you can see at the end of the round, all four colors have equal stitches once again. And now the hard part is done. We'll begin the first round of our two round repeat with round four. So now that we have these little chain ones established, there really isn't any more counting to do. They'll function as markers for us to mark our increases. At this point, the instructions are just to work one double crochet in each stitch up to the stitch before the next chain space. And into that stitch before the chain space, work three double crochets. Then chain one and skip the chain space below. We're actually not working into any chain spaces in this pattern, unlike many traditional granny squares. But into the very next stitch after the chain space, work two double crochets. And that's all you gotta do in color A for round four and all even numbered rounds actually. There'll be a couple stitches left of color B, but that is A-OK. -okay. Just move right along to color B. And repeat, working one double crochet in each stitch of the previous round up to the stitch before the chain space. Into the stitch before the chain space, work three double crochets. Chain one, skip the chain, and work two double crochets right into the next stitch on the other side of the chain one space. And repeat the process on the remaining two colors. When you've worked your two double crochet increase on the other side of the chain one space in color D, you're D for done with round four. Now we're on round five which will be the same for all odd numbered rounds. 
And after this one, I think you'll see that a super simple pattern is emerging here, which makes continuing the square on very, very easy and fun, in my opinion. So again, work one double crochet in each stitch up to the stitch before the chain one space. And if you recall, in the previous round, this stitch here got a three double crochet increase. Well, this round, it gets two. Chain one, and the next stitch gets a three double crochet increase before you change to the next color. And repeat that pattern for each remaining color, working one double crochet in each stitch up to one before the chain space, two double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, into the stitch before and after the chain one corner spaces. Now our little spiral granny square is starting to take shape. You could repeat rounds four and five to grow your square as wide as you'd like. But before I show you how to finish off the final round and fasten off, I want to talk a little about troubleshooting, just in case you're going along and you have to put your project down and pick it up again. I want you to have your bearings and not get confused because this pattern really is kind of foolproof. So before you think you messed up somewhere, let's talk about some possibilities and what it means. As I mentioned, when you've completed a round, all four colors will be equal lengths on the outermost round of your square. So at this point, you'll pop your hook into color A and continue on. If you pick up your work and it looks like this, with one color longer than the others, and two live loops kind of one on top of the other, it means you pick up the bottom color to continue on from here. So in this case, we've just started a round but didn't finish it and we're in the middle of a round right after working color A. The only kind of boo-boo you can make here is something like this, where I pick up my project and I've got one color longer than the others, but it's color D. And what that means is that I continued color D on longer than I should have. I was supposed to stop at this first chain space, then pick up color A and start a new round, but instead I have this extra row of color D. So you could unravel that extra row of color D pick up A and B back at the start of a new round. But you don't really have to do that. Why undo all that work that you did? You can just pick up color A, work to B, then complete C, and at that point the D row will already be done for you. Then you can pick up color A again and be right back on track with your rounds. And about those rounds, if you can learn to read your work, those will be easy to keep track of too. Rather than keeping track of odd numbered rounds or even numbered rounds, you can just look at the previous rounds increases because they will always alternate. Three double crochets, two double crochets, three double crochets, two double crochets. So as I work up to the stitch before the next chain space, and I don't know if I'm on an odd or even numbered round, I can just look to the stitch below to see if it was part of a two stitch increase or a three stitch increase. I can see that this little stitch I need to work into was one of a two stitch increase. So that tells me I need to work a three stitch increase now. And chain one. And similarly on the other side of the chain one, I've got a three stitch increase on the previous round. That means I need to work a two stitch increase into the next stitch now. And so when you've grown your square to the size you want, all you gotta do is unravel those increases. So you've only got one stitch in that first stitch before the chain space. Then finally, you work one double crochet right into the chain space. And fasten off. And when you do that in all four colors, it squares off your little spiral and you are done. And that is how you crochet an infinity spiral four color granny square that lays perfectly flat. I hope this tutorial inspires you to plug this modern little square into any granny square project you wanna do, or just make the biggest spiral you can, cause this is just such a relaxing, 
fun little pattern to work around and around and around and around. When it's ready, links to that granny square spiral sweater pattern will be linked down below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.